Solving this integral will make you look cooler. So, cooler in the sense that this integral will involve the derivative of beta function. Yeah. So, if you don't know about, about derivative of beta function, uh, you can actually check a video over here that uh, I have uh, derived the derivative of beta function in my previous video. And let's say if we have beta of x comma some constant k, in that case, the derivative will be uh, beta of x comma k times uh, di gamma of x minus di gamma of x plus k. So I have already derived this and I already linked uh, and I already linked this video also uh, over here uh, previously. Now let's solve this problem. The first thing that you might want to do is we can simplify this integral in this way. So let's say if i of n is integral from 0 to 1 sin inverse x times x to the power n dx. If i of n is this integral, then i dash of 0 will just be our original integral. Yeah. Arc sin x ln x dx. And if you ask me how, because if we take derivative, this will be x to the power n times ln of x. And now substitute n as 0, so x to the power 0 will be 1. So that's why uh, this is the case over here, and we will try to solve this integral first. Now, how do we solve this integral? The first thing you can do is, if you want to simplify sin inverse x, you can do integration by parts. And you can differentiate this and integrate this expression. So if we do that, uh, we basically have sin inverse x over here. At first it is neither differentiated nor anything else. And then x to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1, now the integral. And it goes from 0 to 1 minus integral from 0 to 1 now the derivative 1 by uh, root under 1 minus x square and then uh, the derivative uh, sorry integral will be x to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 dx okay so now if we evaluate this uh, at 1 this is pi by 2 times 1 by n plus 1 and at 0 this is 0 minus 0 minus 1 by n plus 1 now this is integral from 0 to 1 x to the power n plus 1 by root under 1 minus x square dx okay now the next thing that we can do is we can let y equals to x square yeah so if we let y equals to x square now the limits will again go from 0 to 1 and since y equals to x square is there we have y to the power 1 by 2 is equals to x that's why this is y to the power n plus 1 by 2 root under 1 minus y and dx will be 1 by 2 y to the power minus 1 by 2 dy okay now it's getting simplified and you might notice that it's getting into the form of beta function now so pi by 2 n plus 1 minus okay so this is uh, 1 by 2 times n plus 1 and now this is integral from 0 to 1 y to the power this is n by 2 yeah and 1 minus y to the power minus 1 by 2 dy okay so now we know this is uh, a kind of beta function not kind of really a beta function yeah and so we have 1 by 2 times n plus 1 times beta of and you have to increase the powers by 1 so we have n by 2 plus 1 comma now 1 by 2 okay so this is our i of n 
Now we would like to take the derivative, yeah. Basically, you can like open this beta in terms of gamma and then take derivative, or directly uh, we also know what the derivative beta function is. So both of them give same result. Both of them are actually same, but uh, it's better to directly go by the formulas. Yeah. Now we have i dash of n. Now note that this is derivative with, with respect to n. So we have minus pi by two times n plus one whole square. Now first of all, if we differentiate, uh, we need to use product rule yeah, because there are two expressions. So we have first of all differentiating one by n plus one. We have uh, plus one by two times n plus one whole square beta n by two plus one comma one by two. Now differentiating the beta function, we have minus one by two times n plus one, and then and then we have uh, beta of n by two plus one comma one by two. Yeah, and we have di gamma of n by two space is not enough or uh, di gamma of n by two plus one minus di gamma of uh, n by two plus three by two yeah and also since we have n by two over here the coefficient of n is one by two so we'll write a one by two over here okay so now we finally have the derivative now let's evaluate this derivative at zero yeah so we have minus pi by two plus one by two times beta of one comma one by two minus one by two times beta of one comma one by two di gamma of one minus di gamma of three by two times one by two now we need to know some properties which i will write over here so basically uh, di gamma of n plus one is equals to di gamma of n plus one by n. You need to know this property, which I will, which I have derived in a video over here. And the other thing you need to know is di gamma of one by two is negative of whole Maxwellian constant minus two ln two. I have derived this over here. Okay. So if you know this, uh, basically what we can do is we can find the value of di gamma of 3 by 2. This is just 1 plus 1 by 2. So this is di gamma of 1 by 2 plus 1 by 1 by 2. That means plus 2. So this is how we find the value of di gamma 3 by 2. Okay. Now we are good to go. Yeah. So this will be minus pi by 2. Now, what is the value of beta 1 comma 1 by 2? Let's find it over here. Beta of 1 comma 1 by 2. This is just gamma 1, gamma 1 by 2, by gamma 3 by 2. Now, uh, gamma 1, gamma 1 by 2, let's say it's just gamma 1 by 2. Now, this is 1 by 2 times gamma 1 by 2, yeah. Yeah, so because we know that uh, gamma of n times n is actually equal to gamma of n plus 1. Yeah, using that we have 1 by 2 times gamma 1 by 2. And gamma 1 by 2 cancel out, so we have just 2 because gamma of 1 is 1. Okay, so this is just 2. A plus, this is just now 1 minus this is 1 times now gamma of 1 is negative of whole Maxwellian constant minus gamma of 3 by 2 is minus whole Maxwellian constant minus 2 ln 2 yeah and then plus 2 okay by 1 by 2 okay now we have minus pi by 2 plus 1 minus 1 into 
so minus 12 mass turning constant plus 12 mass turning constant plus 2 ln 2 minus 2 times 1 by 2 okay this cancels out so we have what do we have now it's pi by 2 plus 1 minus 1 times this is ln 2 minus 1 okay now this is minus pi by 2 yeah minus pi by 2 plus 1 minus ln 2 plus 1 so this is 2 minus pi by 2 minus ln 2 and yeah I do think this is the answer 2 minus pi by 2 minus ln 2 yeah this is the answer and to discuss about how we solve this problem basically we used integration by parts first and then beta function and the derivative of beta function and then properties of beta and di gamma functions yeah and then we solve the problem so this problem wasn't too tough yeah uh, it was a kind of average problem and the fact that we use beta function and its derivative is cooler and yeah i hope you enjoyed uh, this idea yeah and thanks for watching look forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos too